Welcome back guys and girls to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn about service mesh. So let's take a look at a regular Kubernetes application. So generally like multi-tier application, uh, you will generally have a front-end microservice, uh, which is basically uh, your UI application uh, running in a pod, and then you will have some backend service. And then uh, behind the backend service will be a backend microservice, uh, which is running some kind of backend application. And that backend application might reach out to some other microservices, maybe uh, to check the inventory or something. And let's say uh, we are running a pod with the inventory application container image uh, behind this inventory service. So now uh, let's say uh, this backend app, you deployed a new version uh, and you want to do canary with it. Uh, so basically you have a backend application version one, some pods are running with uh, app version one, some pods are running with backend application version two, and uh, this is the newer version. So in the beginning, uh, you only want 10% of the traffic from the UI app to go to this version two, and the rest of the traffic uh, goes to this uh, version one, uh, because this is the stable version. Uh, and then after some time, if things look good with this new version, you want to change the, all the traffic to this uh, app version two. So how can you do this? So one way is of course you can code it, right? So in the UI app, uh, you can say, hey, send 10% of the traffic to uh, backend app version two and 90% to backend app version one. Besides this canary, there are a lot of functionality uh, that we generally need. Uh, for the pod to pod communication. Uh, you need to make sure there's authentication, authorization, uh, discovery, uh, circuit breaker pattern. So if something goes wrong, you want to break communication to certain pods and redirect the traffic to something else. Uh, then there is tracing. And let's say you are a great coder <laughs> and then you started coding all of this into all these different applications, right? Uh, so you're coding all this. In a real world enterprise, each layer is maintained by different teams. And let's say this UI app layer is written in Java and then in a perfect polyglot way, uh, again, polyglot is a fancy word. What it means is uh, if you're running your microservice uh, in an ideal world, you can write each microservice in different programming languages uh, because they are uh, independent of each other. So let's say your UI app is written in Java. So you have to write the security, discovery, circuit breaker, testing, tracing, coding uh, based on Java SDK. And then your backend applications may be written in Python. Uh, so you have to write this functionality using Python SDK. And then your inventory app written in Golang. Uh, so th this functionality, the security, discovery, circuit breaker, tracing uh, written in Golang SDK. Uh, so it's a lot of coding. So by this time, you are probably thinking, I don't want to go to work. Won't it be easier if all these functionalities are taken care by a standardized a package or standardized deployment, and you don't have to code it in each of your application and deploy it in your pod? So that's what service mesh solves. So all these functionalities, you can deploy a service mesh and it's not dependent on your application's programming language. It's external to your actual application container. Uh, so it can be written uh, in one uniform SDK and then deployed in all these uh, different parts. So let's take a deeper look on how it's done. Let's look at anatomy of a pod. We are going back to basics now. <laughs> so generally, um, we run one app container per pod. But remember, uh, one pod can run more than one container. So what happens with service mesh is uh, we deploy another container within the same pod and this container works as sidecar or proxy. Whenever you hear the word uh, sidecar, that means that another container is running alongside your application container within the same pod. And when you hear the word daemon set, that means another pod is running in your node. So don't get confused between daemon set and sidecar. And all the functionalities 
of part-to-part -part communication like security discovery, circuit breaker tracing are deployed within the sidecar container and it works as a proxy. Uh, so for a regular proxy, uh, any traffic that comes to your application has to come through the proxy uh, and go through the proxy, right? Uh, so this works the same way. So without service mesh, uh, your pods, let's say your UI app pod is communicating with your backend app pods, right? And I'm abstracting the service layer, like it is communicating through service, but behind the scene, a service is just mapping of IP addresses, right? Uh, like cluster IP and node port, uh, it just tracks what pods are up, what pods are running uh, with that application, and then just routing traffic to it. With service mesh, how this would look like is, remember the service mesh deployed in a sidecar container within the same pod working as a proxy. And anytime you have a proxy in your regular application, all that traffic has to go in and go out through the proxy. So if UI app wants to talk to backend app, so UI app will send the traffic to the sidecar proxy and the sidecar proxy will determine, hey, where should I send this traffic to? And then this sidecar proxy for this UI app pod will send it to the sidecar proxy of the backend app pod. And then this sidecar in the backend pod will send it to the actual backend app container. So now that we have this uh, sidecar proxy uh, taking care of all the pod to pod uh, traffic aspect, how do we do the canary? Quite simple, right? So this sidecar can say, hey, send 90% of the traffic to this backend app version one sidecar and 10% of the traffic to backend app version two sidecar. So this is just one example. So you can do also like tracing, circuit breaker, authentication authorization using this sidecar. So this dedicated sidecar uh, infrastructure layer for handling service to service communication is called service mesh. So there is a lot of configuration. So something needs to tell all the sidecars that's running alongside your application container within each pod, uh, what to do, uh, what to look out for, all that stuff. So some other process need to control this. Uh, well, there's always something that's trying to control all of us, isn't it? <laughs> so service mesh is divided into control plane and data plane. Uh, so let's say we have our app container and this is our proxy container and this is one pod and then this is all the pods running within it and maybe this is like all the communication pattern like this proxy needs to talk with this proxy this proxy with all that other proxies you got the idea so all the proxies deployed with your application container uh, so all this is called a data plane so these proxies mediate and control all network communication uh, between microservices. And then we have this control plane, which manages and configures the proxies uh, to route traffic. Uh, also additionally, the control plane can configure uh, to enforce policies, collect telemetry, etc. Uh, so there are a couple of popular service meshes. We have Istio, which is open source. We also have AppMesh uh, from AWS. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you like the video, click the like button, smash it if you're into that kind of stuff, and subscribe. I have a bunch of other helpful videos on AWS and how to switch your career. Uh, check them out. Uh, Alright, I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.